What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Welcome to an off-the-cuff installment here at The Time Teller channel. We're going to be talking about the rarest Rolexes that you've probably never heard of, all right? It is 2.16 p.m. Let's get down to business. Now, here in front of us, we see Paul Newman's Daytona, right? Um, Paul Newman's Daytona just sold for $17.8 million. The thing is, is that when everybody thinks of Rolex, specifically rare Rolexes, they think of the Paul Newman Daytona. So that's not really on the list because you already know about it. But what about the ones that you don't know about? Well, we're going to be going in order of uh, rarity. Um, so least rare to most rare. And the prices are crazy because um, you can buy these if you can find them. And if you have unlimited zeros in your bank account. Um, let's take a look. So first I wanted to mention, uh, the Rolex 1016. Now I understand that the Rolex 1016 is like fairly common as far as people putting it on their grail list. But the thing is, it's still kind of attainable, right? The 1016 is sought after and expensive, but it's not unobtainium. Um, but what about this 1016 that they made in 1963 known as the space dweller? That's right, when we zoom in here, we can see Space Dweller on the dial. Now, this isn't just like some aftermarket fake thing. Um, in 1963, Rolex took a certain amount of these 1016 Explorers and wanted to celebrate space travel by calling this the Space Dweller. Now, the thing is, all these years later, we have things like the Sky Dweller, like the uh, Sea Dweller, and we can look back and just see how far Rolex has come when we're looking at functional, purpose-based watches. But if it's up to me, I would still choose one of these 1016 uh, Space Dwellers. Number one, because it's like sci-fi space watch, but it's still a Rolex 1016 Explorer. So that's my pick. Um, you can expect to spend around $150,000 or up on a decent example. Um, but again, that's the, it, all of these watches on the list today are a bit too rich for my bank account, but I still absolutely love them. Next, we're going into like actual unicorn territory um, with the reference number 4113 Rattrapont. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be uh, fancy schmancy. It's a split second chronograph. Now, this is pre-Cosmograph, definitely pre-Daytona. Um, this split second chronograph is uh, very, very rare when it comes to Rolex's catalog. Only 12 were produced, and it is said that only 9 are currently accounted for. And these numbers will probably decrease as time goes on and these things get lost or broken or whatever. Um, each one is worth upwards of $2.5 million. And when we're talking about unicorn chronograph Rolexes, it pretty much doesn't get any better than this. Um, I'm showing you a multitude of photos, but really what I want to focus on is right here. Monochrome watches, shout out, they have... Uh, some very, very good write-ups on a bunch of watches. So this is the Zero Graph, the Rolex Zero Graph. Again, this is pre-Cosmograph. Uh, this is from 1937. Now, I should tell you, this one, I forgot to tell you the date. This is from 1942. This true unicorn, like crazy watch, is from around 1937. This is the Zero Graph re reference number 3346. It's a mono push chronograph which is already kind of crazy and you can see here this Rolex movement it is actually an in-house mono push Rolex movement in this watch and again it's said to only have 12 production pieces known there's not a whole lot of information on this watch everything you look up they say this is the first Rolex chronograph to have a pusher and a rotating bezel. So that's cool. There's also, uh, you'll notice, a California dial similar to my Rolex Bubbleback 2940. And people theorize that this is kind of like a prototype that they made 12 of, uh, or a concept that they made 12 of, and that uh, they chose not to make in full production, which is a bummer because I think this thing is 
freaking awesome. Um, but you can you can you can expect to pay around four million dollars for each example. So again, a, a bit too rich for my taste, but still very very cool. Next up, we have the Rolex Legend. That's right. If you type in the Legend Rolex, this is the watch that shows up. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane watch. Um, this is reference number 6263. This is just a regular Cosmograph, right? Cosmograph Daytona. No, it's solid gold. Um, shout out to Fratello Watches for some really good write-ups. Registered design, 6263. Uh, you can see that reference number there. Gorgeous, just solid gold case back. Um, this watch is insane. Uh, they've been selling for, let me see like $4.1 million in 2017 one sold for, but I think recently one sold for over 5 million. So um, yeah, these are very, very expensive watches. Um, it pretty much doesn't get more impressive than this when we're talking about wrist presence and Rolexes. Uh, if I could choose any Daytona, it would be the legend. But again, $5 million a pop. I don't know if I can swing that nowadays. Let's see when I get my tax return back. I'm just kidding. There's uh, uh, I'm not getting anything back. Um, California just squeezes me dry. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. And we can't edit this because Gato's not editing these off the cuff episodes. So oopsies. Next up, a watch I'm incredibly, incredibly jealous of. This is the final piece. Shout out to Hodinky for this write-up. You guys know I'm obsessed with the Rolex 6062, right? You have a whole lot of complication in an oyster case, not something you see every day from Rolex. A moon phase, uh, a triple date. <clears throat> it's just incredible. But this is something special, and it's not just because it has diamonds here and a gilt dial, like a like black this is a watch with some pretty intense history and shout out to rarest.org for this because I wanted to read their write-up of this watch. 6062s already go like upwards of $700,000 a pop if you can find one, right? Actually, Nicolas Cage owns one. I just mentioned that in, in a, a recent episode. <clears throat> rarest.org wrote, this Rolex 6062 Bao Dai, and I'm probably pronouncing the name incorrectly because it's Vietnamese, so I apologize. They said, this watch was specifically made for the 13th and last emperor of Vietnam, Bao Dai Win Phuc Vinh Thuy. I'm trying, guys. I, I apologize. In 1951, <clears throat> following the Indochina War, world leaders met at Geneva to discuss the future of Vietnam. During this visit, Bao Dai went to the store... Uh, Chronometry Philippe Beguin, uh, a famed Rolex retailer, and requested them to show him an exclusive watch. He said he wanted the rarest and most precious Rolex ever made. After rejecting a few samples, he finally settled for a Rolex 6062, yellow gold with a black dial and diamond indexes. Rolex made only three black dial models of the 6062 with diamond markers. Two of them feature six diamond indexes for odd hour numbers. However, the one owned by Bao Dai had five diamonds set at even numbers. The dial layout is also unique for this particular piece. Uh, this sold for $5.1 million uh, at auction. <clears throat> so it's not Paul Newman Daytona number, but absolutely insane. And this one was said to be made uh, circa 19. 54. So guys, there are a bunch of really cool Rolexes out there. And I know people like their number one complaint about Rolex is, oh, I can't find them. And then their second complaint about Rolex is uh, they're boring. Like they just make the same watch over and over again. But if you go into the past, you know, this is not just some normal Explorer. This is definitely not just some normal chronograph. This is definitely not some just random normal chronograph. And this is probably <clears throat> the coolest watch that um, Rolex has ever made. So, and again, the legend is is also just super duper sexy. So, shout out to, um, uh, let's see, we Hodinkee for telewatches, I think Monochrome and Rarest.org. Thank you for all the images. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm a big Rolex fanboy. Um, but I can also admit that recently, 
you know, modern ones aren't as cool as the vintage ones. And that's why I'm a vintage dealer. So thank you for hanging out with me on this episode. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section because I learn from you just as much as you learn from me. Uh, check out T3 Time to Drive. Check out uh, the channel memberships, okay? Click join next to the subscribe button. It's like YouTube's Patreon. It's $4.99 a month. You get an extra piece of content every single week. You get early access to what I'm reviewing. And uh, you get access to that members-only Discord chat. So you really do help me out. And it's my channel members that truly allow me to do, do this for a living consistently. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. All my supporters, I absolutely love you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Talent. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. I wish I had one of these bow die Rolexes on my wrist, but this stova will do.